Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Talk. My name is John, and today here on the channel, we're going to be talking comedies. This is going to be the top 10 comedies of all time, and comedy is the most subjective genre other than horror. You know, they go hand in hand. Which one is more subjective, comedy or horror? I like to lean towards horror, but comedy is also very subjective. Everybody finds something different funny, and I'm no different. I'm very into very stupid humor, which you guys will notice right away as we get into the list, the kind of comedies that I like. I sometimes like dry humor, but, you know, for me, that's more hit or miss, where if it's something is just really stupid i'm like a child and i'll absolutely laugh at that but because of that i know that comedy is very subjective so this is just my list based on my opinions and the other thing about comedy is is that the physical media community and the physical media companies don't really look too fondly at comedy mainly because it's very subjective so you never know how they're going to sell when they go to 4k blu-ray and because of that we do not have too many comedies on 4k blu-ray so we are going to talk about their physical media releases but their blu-rays and 4k blu-rays do not have an impact on this list this is just my top 10 favorite comedies of all time and we'll talk about their physical media releases as we go along and what i want to see from the future of their physical media releases and without further ado let's just dive right into it with number 10. how great is jersey boys it's not great it's fantastic you totally undersold it. And at number 10, we get 2010's The Other Guys, directed by Adam McKay, teaming up Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell for their first time together. They would team up again for Daddy's Home and Daddy's Home 2, which I don't think Daddy's Home is a very good movie, but Daddy's Home 2, if you watch it around Christmas time, it does have some really good jokes and a couple of heartwarming moments, but I really don't think those two films compare to The Other Guys, which, like I said, it's in my top 10 comedies of all time. Will Ferrell and Mark Wahlberg have great chemistry together. Will Ferrell is one of my favorite comedic actors of all time from the time he was working on Saturday Night Live. You know, he kind of lost his edge like a lot of other comedians do. Once we kind of get past this movie, this is probably his last big moment. It was funny to see him pop up in Barbie last year. We kind of felt like we got that old Will Ferrell back. But comedic actors, they always just kind of come and go pretty fast when they have their time at the top of the mountain. It's not like dramatic actors or action actors. Like Tom Cruise has been at the top since like the 1980s. Whereas in comedy, you know, they kind of come and go. But this movie is so funny. Not only are these two lead actors great, Michael Keaton, who a lot of people also forget, is a great comedic actor as well. That's why people were so upset when he was cast as Batman in 1989 because they're like, the comedian? The short comedian? He could not be Batman. Of course, they were all proven wrong. And then people just forgot that he could also just do comedy. And you get and you cast him in here as Captain Gene. Two good men are dead. And you guys are fighting over who's going to be the next hot shot, huh? Is that what's happening? Yes, that's exactly what's happening. And he is just so funny with his running TLC jokes. And then, of course, a lot of us thought that this movie was going to revolve around Samuel Jackson and The Rock when the trailers came out. But no, they get killed off pretty damn fast in a very funny sequence. You thinking what I'm thinking, partner? Aim for the bushes because they just think that they're unstoppable. So they think they could just jump off a skyscraper and land in the bushes. And as we see in the next scene, when Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell are talking, what were they aiming for? There weren't any bushes. And then Mark Wahlberg says, yeah, wasn't even an awning. They just thought they were invincible. They thought they were super cops. And now this movie's about who was going to fill their shoes. And Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell, there is just so much comedic gold in this movie. And everybody is just playing along. And Adam McKay, you know, he doesn't really make comedies too much. He makes almost dramedies at this point for good and for bad. I absolutely have enjoyed his more dramatic work, but I do miss the straightforward, stupid comedies that he used to make. And this is one of the best ones. I feel the hunger. And speaking of very underrated comedies from the 2000s, we get McGruber, based on a Saturday Night Live skit. This one stars Will Forte, Kristen Wiig, Ryan Felipe in one of his rare good roles. And you also get Val Kilmer in here as the villain. And everybody is playing along. So many great cameos in this movie. I'm a big wrestling fan. You get a lot of wrestlers from that era, including Chris Jericho, Mark Henry, Big Show, Kane. I love it. This is just a straightforward, very stupid film, obviously, based on the Saturday Night Live skit, MacGruber, which is a ripoff of MacGyver. The only difference is, is MacGruber cannot solve these problems because he gets easily distracted. And then, of course, the bomb ends up going off. Now, how do you turn that into a movie? Well, you may Make it a spoof and a parody of 1980s and 1990s action films. Hope you enjoy being date raped, ma'am. This is my daughter. Hello? Sorry. Killed my wife. 
You know, look at the way McGruber looks. We get plenty of montages in this movie. We get the great assemble the team montage. And then, of course, McGruber ends up just ruining that entire thing. There's a lot of great quotes that I quote almost every day. I'm going to (laughs) shoot. Just show me what you want me to fuck. (laughs) I just I love it. McGruber is so stupid. And the movie itself is just so funny. And it honestly rewards you for rewatching it because you're just going to be quoting this movie all the time. And if you wrote this movie off because it was a Saturday Night Live film and, you know, those are more missed than hit. Obviously, we have the blue. Brothers, Wayne's World 1 and 2, but other than that, it's really more missed than hits. Some people like Coneheads and A Night at the Roxbury, but I think that this is actually one of the best movies based on a Saturday Night Live skit. If you haven't seen McGruber, it's absolutely worth your time. The Blu-ray itself, it's all right, just like the other guys. You know, these aren't very special. They're just straightforward comedy release Blu-rays that haven't received an update in a very long time. And a lot like the other guys, these are also action comedies, and they would actually benefit from a pretty big audio and visual upgrade, but because it's a comedy, I don't expect to see that anytime soon. And then at number eight, speaking of Blu-rays, we're going to go over to my trilogy of Blu-rays packed into one case. And I really do not like this because I would actually, I actually think that the Austin Powers movies deserve a little bit more love than this. Yes, the slipcover is nice, but I do think that these deserve individual packaging and they should come to 4K Blu-ray. People forget in the late 90s and early 2000s, these were some of the most popular films out there. Michael Myers was insanely popular. His career just kind of came and went so fast. He still pops up here and there, but nothing like this. When Austin Powers ruled, the world yeah just had to be there i mean he would pop up at the nickelodeon choice awards and everything but my favorite is still the original one from 1997 you know michael myers plays two roles he plays dr evil and the title character of austin powers and these started out as just straightforward spoofs and parodies of the james bond franchise and they reward you if you were a fan of the roger moore and sean connery era of bond films even as far as the cinematography goes you know they're in vegas which is a pretty big deal for the early james bond movies and i just think it works for that plus the original one features that great monologue from Dr. Evil talking about his childhood, which is one of the funniest scenes, which is just one of the funniest scenes in film history. My father would womanize, he would drink, he would make outrageous claims like he invented the question mark. Again, falls into stupid comedy, but I just think it works for this one. And this is just the one that started the franchise, and I felt like the other two films were trying to live up to the original one. Even though I do think that the other two films are great, The Spy Who Shagged Me and In Goldmember are both great comedies. A lot of people kind of don't like In Goldmember, but I was there, and I've watched rewatched that movie over and over again. It's still really funny, but it just pales in comparison to when you're talking about the original one, which is still a stone-cold comedy classic. Now, you got no outside mirror. No, we lost that. You have no functioning gauges. No, not a one. However, the radio still works. Funny as that may seem. And then at number seven, we got planes, trains, and automobiles. And why do I have the Blu-ray and the 4K Blu-ray? Well, a lot of people already know when they brought planes, trains, and automobiles to 4K Blu-ray, it is one of the worst. And honestly, in my opinion, I'm not afraid to say it. This is the most disappointing 4K Blu-ray release of all time because I absolutely love planes, trains, and automobiles. John Hughes comedy classic from the 1980s. Teaming up John Candy and Steve Martin, who surprisingly have great chemistry. Steve Martin playing the straight guy to John Candy's. You know, he's the really the guy that gets most of the laughs but if they didn't have each other to play off of this movie would not work of course it's very heartwarming there's not many movies that revolve around the thanksgiving holiday this is a thanksgiving tradition for me i have to watch planes trains and automobiles either the day before thanksgiving or on thanksgiving it always just sets off the mood for the holiday season and again it's very heartwarming the ending to this movie will make me cry every single year even though i know it's coming i prepare myself still gets me emotionally john candy has a great monologue in this movie my customers like me Because I'm the real article. What you see is what you get. And then, of course, all of the big laughs throughout the entire film that are just absolutely perfect. And when you watch this actual 4K Blu-ray, it includes all of the deleted scenes. And it just shows you that this movie actually could have been a very different film had it been edited a different way. Showing you the power of editing, even in comedy movies. This movie is edited perfectly. We didn't need any of those deleted scenes. And even though Steve Martin has talked about how J. On Candy's monologue actually got cut down and was actually way better. I do think that all the editing decisions that were done for this movie are... Are actually done perfectly but you have to steer clear of that 4k blu-ray because you're just going to be so let down the blu-ray is still the definitive edition of this so why am i holding on to that 4k blu-ray i guess i just keep hoping that it'll get better i mean i don't know i really got to get rid of it at some point but i guess i just use it here as a tool to show people you know this is what you don't do with 4k blu-ray but anyway you can't take away from the charm and the jokes of plage trains and automobiles
And then at number six, we get my favorite Eddie Murphy film, Beverly Hills Cop. It was really hard to pick one Eddie Murphy film. If I had to pick, a, like, 1980s were just ruled by Eddie Murphy. We had 48 Hours, Trading Places, Beverly Hills Cop, Coming to America. You know, he kind of fell off, like I was saying about Will Ferrell. Comedic actors that just kind of at that one high, that one peak for a very short amount of time. But Eddie Murphy was the comedic god of the 1980s. He had some classics in the 1990s. I'm a big fan of The Nutty Professor. Let's not take away from Beverly Hills Cop. This is one of the greatest comedies of all time. Directed by Martin Brest, who directed another one of my favorite comedies of all time that didn't make the top 10 list in Midnight Run. I do think that his better film is still Beverly Hills Cop. And I love Midnight Run. I go back and forth. Which one do I like more? They're very similar. Martin Brest had a distinct style to him. And, you know, his movies might not look like the most visually stunning movies. Like, if you go from Beverly Hills Cop, which is directed by Martin Brest, and then you go to Beverly Hills Cop 2, which is directed by Tony Scott. That one's got a lot more style to it because Tony Scott has a very distinct look that worked perfect for the 1980s. Whereas this movie, you don't really think too much about the visuals, but you're there for the jokes, and this really was a perfect vehicle for Eddie Murphy. My favorite scene in this movie is when he gets thrown through the window and then gets arrested, and he's just so surprised that he's being arrested. Disturbing the piece that got thrown out of a window! What's the fucking charge for getting pushed out of a moving car, huh? Jaywalking? <laughs> you know, I, I still laugh at that. That one joke in this movie will get me every single time. Get the fuck out of here! I just love it. Eddie Murphy is perfect. He's still one of the greatest comedians of all time. People forget that. Without him, Saturday Night Live would probably not be around today because the 1980s were a real low for them, but Eddie Murphy was a real high. Coming in at number five, we got Groundhog Day. This one is my favorite Bill Murray film of all time. Bill Murray is one of my favorite comedians of all time as well. This is the film that unfortunately killed him and Harold Ramis' friendship. Harold Ramis directed this movie. Bill Murray gives a great performance. This is where we get, obviously, start the Groundhog Day movie trope where we're stuck in a time loop. But this movie is just filled with great gag after gag after gag. It's Groundhog Day. It's still just once a year, isn't it? Ned Ryerson, obviously we get so many running jokes, so many running characters that we get to see in different parts of the film as Phil Connors becomes a little bit warmer because that's the lesson he has to learn. Bill Murray plays his character perfect, the guy who starts out as an asshole who has to eventually start warming up to other people and realize that, you know, maybe his arrogance and his ego are getting the better of him and he learns his lesson in this movie in the most perfect way. Again, it's another great heartwarming film while also being absolutely hysterical. And unlike a lot of other comedies, this movie looks great. It takes place in the snow of Puxatawney, Pennsylvania. That's where we also get Puxatawney Phil right here, because this 4K Steelbook features both Phil's on it. And this was an upgrade to the previous 4K Blu-ray release, which did not feature Dolby Vision. And I do think that this is the more definitive edition of Groundhog Day. So if you haven't picked up Groundhog Day, this is one of the rare comedies that are on 4K Blu-ray and has a great 4K Blu-ray release. It actually has two, which is pretty wild. It actually has already received a regular 4K Blu-ray release and has received an upgrade to that 4K Blu-ray. We haven't seen too many of those done. Usually it's only done by studios like Sony who did this one. And then at number four, we got Christmas Vacation. This is my favorite of the vacation films, even though I enjoy almost all the films. The only one I don't like is European Vacation. I guess I really missed Randy Quaid in that one, but the original Vacation's an absolute classic. I really came down to do I want to pick that one or Christmas Vacation, but my heart says Christmas Vacation because this is a movie I watch every single year at least once around Christmas time. Another movie that my wife Faith and I just always quote, you serious, Clark? <laughs> That's a big one for us. And why don't you get yourself something real nice like that's just something that we always talk about and I'll, again another rare comedy that has received an upgrade mainly because it's a christmas film so of course this one's come to 4k blu-ray a really good warner brothers 4k blu-ray release here with a really nice slip cover on it and i can really appreciate that because we don't really get too many comedies on 4k blu-ray but this one deserved the upgrade and definitely put a lot of tlc into it and i can appreciate that so if you are going to pick up christmas vacation definitely pick it up on this 4k blu-ray <laughs> And then at number three, the first film on the podium taking home the bronze is Major League. And this just came to 4K Blu-ray, and it's a huge visual upgrade. I was a little bit disappointed with the audio, but that doesn't matter because the visuals were just so stunning. And this steelbook, I absolutely love it. I just love how this looks like Serrano's Locker. And, you know, don't steal Joe Boo's rum. I just think I'm a big fan of this steelbook. It's one of my favorite steelbooks already. You get the magnets. Like I said, I could put it on my refrigerator. I haven't done it yet. I keep them right here for now until I decide what I want to 
to do because you know even on the back of the locker we get these great pictures as well so whatever route you want to go it's a big upgrade to the visuals but how is the film the film is like i said it's my third favorite comedy of all time when i was watching this 4k blu-ray to review it here on the channel i was sitting on the couch just laughing to myself to the point where my wife faith walks and she's like what are you laughing i'm just like this movie is just so funny the jokes just always work for me you get charlie sheen in this movie like everybody is playing a part it's a very big ensemble cast no one is trying to outdo the other one you know you get wesley snipes in a rare comedy as well and he's great in this movie he has no problem making fun of himself as willie mays hayes you know tom barriger is in this movie he has a good relationship with renee russo in her first film i mean everybody is so 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 funny in this movie just in the beginning where they're getting their phone calls and they all don't believe that a major league team would be interested in them when they're hot calling the manager and he's working at an auto parts place he's like yeah well you know what i got a guy on the other line about some breaks so i'm gonna have to call you back and then uh tom barringer's character in mexico there he's like if you were gonna call you could have said you were from the fucking yankees you know obviously the cleveland indians one of the sad sack major league baseball teams of all time although i don't really think that they deserve that i mean they're not even called the indians anymore so what am i saying but anyway this is a classic comedy of the 1980s that of course because it's a sports film builds up to that big epic sports ending you know it's coming but it still works because that's one of those movie tropes that will just never not be good and you blend that all into a just absolutely hysterical film so of course this has to be number three it's called sex panther by odion it's illegal in nine countries it's made with bits of real panther so you know it's good they've done studies you know 60 percent of the time it works every time and then at number two, this is just a straightforward vehicle for Will Ferrell. That's why I included him on this list twice. And again, directed by Adam McKay from 2004. Anchorman. This movie has a great supporting cast in it. That includes Paul Rudd and Steve Carell. And I just love them in this movie as well as a 1970s news team. They have to deal with the fact that a woman is going to be coming into their news team to create some diversity. And that's a great joke in this movie where <laughs> Will Ferrell's like trying to explain to everybody what diversity is. And he's like, well, what I think diversity is, is an old, old wooden ship from the Civil War era. And then the, <laughs> the boss is like, Ron, I don't think the network's going to care about an old wooden ship from the Civil War era. And he's just like, all right, I gave it my best shot. You know, we get so many ridiculous, over-the-top, stupid scenes in this movie to the point where I saw this movie in theaters for the first time, and I didn't love it. It actually took numerous rewatches for me to appreciate that, appreciate all the jokes to the point where you're always quoting this movie. I mean, every time, even before I do this, I'll always make the jokes when Ron's trying to warm up his voice. He's doing the scotchy, scotch, scotch. The human torch was denied a bank loan. You hear me? Andre! Look at me! I'll just do that as a joke, even just to make myself laugh. You know, with the glass case of emotion, Jack Black with the burrito. I mean, all that stuff. It just came out of this movie. That's why this is one of my favorite comedies of all time. And this Blu-ray, well... You know, they've actually done pretty well with this one. You know, we got the Rich Mahogany edition because Anchorman, a lot like Anchorman 2, does have an alternate cut of the film. That's how many jokes because they just let them all just improv and just keep going in these scenes to the point where you could just make a whole nother film and just swap out the jokes. They did that for this one. They did it for the sequel. So actually, you know, I can't really knock the Blu-rays for this too, too much, but I would love a definitive 4K Blu-ray. I mean, Anchorman is one of those comedy films that would absolutely deserve it. Cannot triple stamp it. No erase no, Blue no, make it no, true. No. You you can't triple stamp a double stamp. You can't triple stamp a double stamp, Lloyd. Sounds broken. Most likely, sir. I'll bet it was something nice, though. And I couldn't just pick one for number one. I had to go with my gut and pick both. 1994 Jim Carrey films, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, and Dumb and Dumber. Now, in between these movies was also The Mask, which was released in 1994. Jim Carrey was just at the top of the world in 1994. I love The Mask as well, but I would say that's a little less of a straightforward comedy than Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, and Dumb and Dumber. Before 1994, Jim Carrey was in a few films, but he was most famous for being on In Living Color. He actually helped to rewrite the script of Ace Ventura to make it more of a vehicle for himself, gambling on himself, and it paid off in spades. That movie ended up becoming a box office hit despite the fact critics ripped it up you know because again like i was saying comedy is subjective they just saw this as a really stupid comedy movie and then obviously me getting this movie on vhs in the mid 90s with this the mask and dumb and dumber jim carrey was one of my first favorite actors of all time i absolutely love the guy he was a human cartoon character i was just always quoting ace ventura and i was always quoting dumb and dumber 
I still quote Ace Ventura, and I still quote Dumb and Dumber to this day. We landed on the moon! Now, Dumb and Dumber is my favorite comedy of all time. Ace Ventura is, like, right there. You know, I, I still say Dumb and Dumber, but I love Ace Ventura. I love Ace Ventura when nature calls. That is a great character. Again, he's so stupid. He's a great detective. He's a great pet detective. The jokes in the first movie, I think the first one is the better of the two. It tells a more compelling story. You could argue that the jokes in When Nature's Call, some of them might be a little bit funnier, uh, but I still think that overall as a film, uh, the original Ace Ventura Pet Detective just works overall, builds up to a very funny conclusion. You get Sean Young in the movie as well, who many people might forget was a great 80s actor. She appeared in so many great movies such as Blade Runner and No Way Out. She was originally supposed to be in Batman 1989, so, you know, she was a big actress. She pops up in this movie, and what she's asked to do, my God, but it's still just so funny. Ace Ventura is one of those great characters, and then, obviously, Lloyd Christmas from Dumb and Dumber. Oh, my God, he's one of the dumbest characters in film history, and I try and pretend that Dumb and Dumber 2 does not exist because that movie is god-awful. Speaking of just bad films, bad sequels to great comedies, this is why we don't wait too long to make a sequel to comedies. Now, there aren't too many great comedy sequels out there. It's very, very, it's more miss than hit but some of them do work i think anchorman 2 is actually a little bit underrated when it comes to comedy sequels but you know overall we don't really get them too much and the blu-rays for this you know the ace ventura blu-rays are pretty good dumb and dumber only features the director's cut which is very unfortunate friday is very similar to that as well where it only has the director's cut and i do not think that the director's cut for dumb and dumber works they try and make it a little bit more raunchy they drag scenes out a little bit more they have the deleted scenes really cut into that and i thought it had a perfect cut like i was saying with planes trains and automobiles sometimes adding scenes sometimes extending Ending scenes doesn't necessarily work. Trust the editing process. Trust the editor. Sometimes scenes are taken out for a good reason. Sometimes lines are cut for a good reason. And I think you had the perfect cut of Dumb and Dumber as it was. We didn't need the director's cut. I don't think it works particularly well. So if you want the actual original theatrical cut, you have to go all the way back to DVD. That's why we needed 4K Blu-ray for all three 1994 Jim Carrey movies. But if I had to pick two, I want Ace Ventura and Dumb and Dumber on 4K Blu-ray first. These are my top 10 favorite comedies of all time. I have some honorable mentioned you know yeah i love the scary movie franchise one and two in particular but i also really like scary movie three I love The Naked Gun, so you can see I like a lot of spoof and satire movies. I've always been a big fan of parody, mainly because I'm always watching those drama films, so I would love to see those parodied, and we don't get many parodies anymore, unfortunately, mainly because, you know, they took that scary movie idea and they tried to apply it to every other franchise and every other type of movie, like superhero movie. I think we even had dance movies, so my God, they just drove the jokes into the grounds to the point where people were just like, I'm not seeing these movies. They are god-awful, so unfortunately, Scary Movie did a lot of good, but it also unfortunately created a genre of just very 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 bad movies i also like the movie pop star never stop never stopping that's a great underrated comedy from the last uh 10 years now my god if you were going to add a little bit more drama into them i love movies like parenthood and big from the 1980s which are a lot more dramedies than straightforward comedies so that's why those didn't make this list because i was just trying to put on what my favorite straightforward comedies are some movies like planes trains and automobiles and Major League, they do have a little bit of heart to them, but those more are relying on the jokes, and they're just so laugh-out-loud funny, whereas Big has some funny moments, Parenthood has some funny moments, but Parenthood especially, I just rewatched that movie. If you haven't seen Parenthood, I think that might be Ron Howard's best film. But anyway, let's get into the Digital Code Giveaway, because it is Tuesday, and every single Friday video we put out, we ask you guys two Digital Code Giveaway questions. All you have to do is answer one in the comments section. As long as you did that, you came back to this video. We put your name on a magic wheel. We spin that wheel two times. The two names that lands on, they have their choice. The digital codes that you've seen on your screen before you today. But what did I ask you guys? I asked you guys, what was your favorite spy film? And I also asked, what was your favorite movie from the last five years? And both questions had answers all over the place. Everybody has a different favorite film. But I would have to say Oppenheimer at least had the most repeats when it comes to everybody. Now, obviously, when it comes to favorite spy films everybody was all over the place i really think my favorite spy film though is three days of the condor i just think that movie is an absolute masterpiece despite being a huge james bond fan and it does kind of hurt me uh, not to pick a james bond film at number one it would be like goldeneye or skyfall but i just think that three days of the condor is a masterpiece of a 1970s film and also has a great kino lore before 4k blu-ray so I, that's my gut i have to go with it and that's kind of what my heart is telling me so that would be my choice but i appreciate everybody entering into this week's digital code giveaway and without further ado let's spin this magic wheel and see who won
Well, congratulations, Peter Flickinger and the existing four podcast. You guys are this week's two lucky digital code giveaway winners. Peter Flickinger, you've won in the past. The existing four, I believe this is your first win, so congratulations. The way this works is you reach out to me at my email address, let's talk entmt at gmail.com. Or you can reach out to me on Facebook, Instagram, the artist formerly known as Twitter. Direct message me to let me know which of the digital codes you've seen on the screen before you today that you would like. As long as the other winner doesn't get that code first, that digital code is all yours. And we've gotten numerous digital codes gifted to the channel by members of this channel, by subscribers of this channel. And I want to thank each and every single one of you guys for giving us the digital codes to give away here on the channel. That definitely means a lot to me to keep this digital code giveaway going. Any digital code that I receive from movies that I buy goes right into the giveaway. And for for other people to be doing that as well to support the channel that means a lot to me thank you guys all so so much for donating your digital codes if you want to continue to support let's talk we also have channel memberships we have a friends of the channel tier we have a producers tier where you're going to find john doe juggalo jason martin and mr smelly potato we also have a director's tier where you're going to find frank from frank's media and reviews and frank's media and reviews is a great youtube channel you've seen him here on this channel with me on collector's corner john doe juggalo has a youtube channel you guys should check out as well but if you got no money to throw our way don't worry about it we just appreciate you checking out this video we hope you enjoyed it and if you did make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button turn notifications on get out in those streets and tell your friends about us and then we'll be seeing you around